Right, good morning and welcome back to another vlog here on the channel. Yes, you've seen the title, you know where I'm at. If you've watched the last couple of vlogs or a few vlogs, I might have mentioned it a couple of times. I'm currently at the Titanic Quarter in Belfast, which is famous for building the Titanic. Yeah, there's just a dry dock for where they built the Olympic class ships, the Britannic, the Titanic and the Olympic just in there and here's the Titanic Museum I cannot wait to visit that I mean it is literally just open to be honest what about 10 minutes ago it's not busy you can see there's hardly anyone here there is actually a dark ride in there as well and I stayed at the Titanic Hotel last night and it was amazing what a beautiful emotional experience that was just even just driving down into this dockyard and seeing the stunning building and in the hotel and everything I, I just got so emotional with it but yeah this is where the Titanic was built all those hundreds of years ago well I say hundreds of years ago <laughs> well it sank in 1912 I mean I will get all the facts later I'm not very good at remembering things as you know I did buy the book by Robert Ballard when I was a young kid when I was at school I didn't actually buy it again that's false information I won a book token and the thing that I got with it was um, the Titanic book and if there's any pictures of it or information of it in the in the museum I'll go and show you that basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my bag off in the car I'm not sure if I leave my jacket on or not um, I'm actually going to nip out uh, in the car go and get a couple of bits before I come back and yeah then i'll show you where to park if you're coming however if you watch the last vlog you would have seen that but i'm gonna do it as the book goes but yeah each corner i'll get away from the sun over there oh god i'm so snotty as well this morning i feel a bit i feel a bit naff if i'm honest so yeah each corner of these buildings of the well of the building each corner represents the bow of the ship of the titanic i'm not quite sure about this one because it's a bit of an odd shape but definitely the cornered ones anyway that one and that one that's the exact shape of what the bow of the ship would have been so you can imagine that being over there facing this way the ships was there was two in there when they were building them but yeah the harland and wolf crane yard is over there the shipyard you've got the Massive Samson and Goliath Harland and Wolf gantry cranes over there. You've probably seen the tower cranes here. If you don't already know, I've mentioned it about six times already over the past couple of vlogs. But this is what I do for a living. I operate these cranes. The one I'm on, on, the mo on at the moment is similar to this one, which is a saddle jib crane. I mean, I could start my other channel back up and start filming stuff, but there's just too much. I've filmed so much of the course of the past few days I've got so much to do now with editing remembering what I've said remembering what I haven't said it's just a lot people just think oh yeah I'll just start YouTube YouTubing it, it's not easy I mean I get the words mixed up all the time because I'm trying to think of what I need to say and plan the day as it goes but just being here in Belfast it's been amazing it's been one of the nicest places I've ever visited yesterday was one of the best days I've had on my own in a long time. Yes, I do wish my, my partner and my dog was here. I did forget to ask in the hotel. Before I go, leave the music, I'll pop back in and I'll see if they allow dogs there because I definitely want to come back to Ireland again. It's just been amazing. I've only seen a small, tiny part of it. Anyway, I'm going to drop me back in the car park. It is over here anyway. I don't even know what floor I'm on. I've got to press that one because I've no idea. I just came in the lift and came up and yeah. Oh, such a pretty place though. Really nice, fascinating area. Yeah, I've got this new white polo shirt on because all my t-shirts are all creased in my bag because I don't want to pack everything properly and it's all creased up. <laughs> Main entrance. Yeah, so what is my car here? 
Yeah, I'm parked over here. So what I'm gonna do is I've got to nip out now. I will have to now pay for parking. There's machines over there. You get a ticket when you drive through the barrier. Um, <clears throat> but the girl at the reception said it's only, it's like two pound for an hour or something. So it's cheap anyway. It, I tell you what, being in this car park, it, it reminds me of being in like somewhere like Dubai or somewhere, where you come out of your hotel and you're in this underground car park. But if we haven't seen it already in the previous vlogs, this is what I've hired. A Volkswagen Polo, and I tell you what, <laughs> when I get rid of my Fiesta that I've currently got, this I'd, I'd be very interested in getting one of these. It's been a great little car to drive. Um, it's a bit of a faff with the warning signs coming up saying, close your window because of ecosystem and change gear and all of this. I like, ah, to turn all that off, really. But yeah, it's been all right. Right, anyway, I'll see you back here in, I don't know, five or ten minutes where we'll head over and do the Titanic Belfast Museum. Oh, I can't wait for this. I'm so excited. Right, so I'm back at the Titanic Quarter. Here's the hotel. There's the Highlander Wolf Gantry Cranes. Yeah, I don't think they're actually used anymore, but they're actually more of a monument than anything. But I have to show you this. There is a car park just here. But the Titanic Museum and Hotel Car Park in it's just down here. I I completely got lost last night. I drove to the other side, I couldn't find anywhere, but I didn't realise it was here because I'm completely oblivious. It does say hotel parking just on that wall there. Oh, it's amazing round here. So yeah, I'll go down and get parked up again and yeah, let's uh, go and check out the museum. Right, so just parked over there, you can just about see the little polo. Here's the pay station when you leave. So the little paper card that I show you, the ticket, you obviously have to put that in and then uh, gives you the price before you leave. Titanic Belfast. I do have my tickets already sorted. So when I stayed at the hotel last night, I bought the tickets there and it was £23 and you get it on like a printed off piece of paper here. Um, lifts, I've got the escalator here. I think this takes you straight into the museum itself. Yeah, as in recording in here, um, I don't actually know how it's going to go because uh, it, it, it does say on their website that you're not really allowed to film, but I'm guessing that's with big professional cameras rather than little action cameras and vlogging cameras and that sort of thing. And obviously I'll just have to watch what I'm filming as well. So yeah, the museum isn't actually that old. Oh, it's... it's it's a bit busier than I thought it might be. There's a coffee shop in here as well. <laughs> wow. Don't actually know where to go. So you get you can get your tickets over here. There's prices. I'm going to show you the prices. Yeah, so it's not that expensive on the day. $24.95. I think I paid about £23 with the hotel all the other stuff you need to know as well discounts and passes and things that they do and you can book a VIP experience as well where you can actually see a replica of the grand staircase that was in the um, in the Titanic as well so I've just got to queue up over there and go in I think I've got my ticket already sorted but yeah amazing building Right, yeah, might be a small problem. <laughs> I've just walked over to, sh well, actually go on the experience. I've been told I need to go to the visitor service section over here to get an actual ticket. And she just obviously spotted my camera in my hand and she's like, you can't film in, in some of the galleries, but certain things. So I'll see what I can do. Cause obviously there's a dark ride in here as well. And I want to film that. Well, be definitely be getting some merch as well over there I'll be getting a t-shirt or something so uh, yeah I did actually email this place um, a few days ago asking about filming and stuff and I'd never got a reply so I'm a bit gutted about that but never mind I'll see what I can film and then obviously you'll see 
bits and the bits that I will try and film I probably won't talk over it I'll try and make it disc discreet as possible so uh, yeah I think this camera is going in my pocket for a minute <laughs> right so I've come back outside I have now exchanged that piece of paper for tickets um, the SSS Nomadic is included that's just down behind here somewhere so I'll go down and have a look at that but yeah being told I'm not allowed to film at all not even with a mobile phone is a bit um, yeah, I, I, it does say so on their website, but it just seems a bit odd that you can't use, um, well, you can't film. So what I've got to do is I've got to detach my camera from the selfie stick and then just put my camera in my pocket and just sort of, I don't know, probably get some footage on my phone instead. I don't really know and put some music over it. I don't really know. It's, it's quite hard. Um, I have seen other YouTubers come here and actually film the museum before so i don't know i'll go and ask them again but never mind i did email them i've just checked and yeah i, I never got a reply off them it reminds me of like a disney theme park yeah <laughs> it really does yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah. Actually made by WGH Trump Estate, the transportation, which is a British company. So uh, yeah, I'll try and see what footage I can get because yeah. I'm not supposed to be filming anything at the at the moment, unfortunately. for a while. Very well equipped it was. That's where we built the triple expansion engines. Two of them, each as high as a three-story house. I worked on the frame bending shop. We had heat steel beams in the furnace, then hooked them on the slabs of cast iron. And Feel the heat. Curved. Feel the heat. It just can't work. Absolutely, yeah. You had to bend them more than you needed because the frames cleaned out a little when it cooled. Oh, there's the heaters there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I made up a hole, weighed up to four and a half tons. <laughs> they were taller than the dam. The places oh. were overlapped on the edges. Some were raised, one after another. We called it Glencher. One of the four men taught me years ago, that's how you built these ships. I worked as a heater boy. You had to heat the rivets on a wee plate. You pump the bellows till the rivet was quite hot. Then you get a hole of it with your tongs and throw it up to the catcher. And he put it in the hole in the plate with a holder up. There were two of us on the other side of the plate with a holder up. I had to hammer the rivet so it filled the hole before it turned all red. The double bottom. That's a wee space we called the tanks made up of steel plates. The rest of the rivet squad all had to fit into that gap. Ooh. One of the four men would check each of it with a special hammer. If it made a ringing sound, I'd have to get back. You see it straight after work. I'd get scared working down in that double bottom. You only had candles for light. And the constant hammering against the shell plates. You could hear it all over Belfast. Some of those boys ended up stone deaf, so did it. We were paid 31 ball a week. The heater boy and catcher at 16 ball. But we all worked the same 54 hours. The upper deck was steamed too. And part of the strength of the ship. There's no straight lines on the ship. And when you look down the lower deck, you can see the shear of the hull. The stop for a flexion at sea. The stern 
frame had to be strong enough to take the rudder turning in heavy seas. You'd have all these timbers and guy wires to steady the frame, and men scurrying around like ants underneath. When we came to launch day, I was torn between pride and fear. The standing wings were coated in tallow, train oil and soft soap. So the ship would slide and they shifted her weight off the blocks. That was the most dangerous part. And the shipwrights were not going to weigh the last props. They were under compression, you see, and the sliding wings would be released by the hydraulic trigger. Yeah, so I'm not supposed to be filming anything. So you did see that POV there, and I've got to show you this because it's an amazing vantage point. So the mark in here, um, I don't know if you can make it out, but there's one there, and there's one down here. You just see the point of it there and the shape and it goes off up there so basically that's where the dry dock was was just here that's where the titanic was and that's where the britannic or the olympic was and they were in here um, and these posts going down the side are only a quarter of the height of what they would have been so the, the ships you can see the diameter i did mention this earlier that you could see where they were on the ground but the height of this building is the height of what the, the ships were so they would have been up to here so massive but yeah unfortunately I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit gutted i'm not allowed to film more of the experience but so far it's pretty amazing just to even be here and then you've got the harland and wolf shipyard over there yeah beautiful place Right, so that's basically the museum done. There's this last bit here, and I've been told that I could film the last part just inside some of the galleries. It is very quiet and very emotional. There's not actually that many artifacts and things, it's more of a, just a an exhibit of start to finish and the process of the Harland and Wolf shipbuilding yards and, um, and uh, Andrews and uh, all, all that sort of stuff. How he designed the ship and where it was built and now you've got this light show with the model spinning around. And you've got the glass floor with the screens underneath. Yeah, there's people in here filming now anyway. And I was going to do some Insta stories, but the signal in here is not great. So it's a very small video. I will be going outside now anyway to see the SSS Nomadic. I'm not sure you're allowed to film that either. Excuse me. Oh. Wow, look at that. Yeah, so this is the wreck. It's a screen underneath there, it's brilliant how that's done. Yeah, so Robert Ballard found the ship in 1985 and it probably wasn't that long after when I bought the book. I don't know if there's a copy of it in here. And then it's sort of represented on there what they could see and what they found. Really cool in here. I'm going to America on the nicest ship in the world. I'm coming with some of the nicest people in the world too. Isn't that just lovely? Yeah, this bit in here is really cool. What you're seeing on the screen is pretty much what I'm seeing. It's, it's quite dark in spots. But the lighting in here is brilliant. The camera's picking up really well. Got one of the deck chairs here. Yeah, really good museum. I think this is the end. Oh, exhibition continues. I thought that was it actually. <laughs> yeah, but like I said, there is a, a bit somewhere we can have afternoon tea and uh, yeah, like a tour. Um, and it's actually a recreation of the steps. But yeah, you can get a Titanic Lego model, a bit bigger than that one now. 
it's, it's massive. I would like to get that. Just seeing if the, the book's in here, the Robert Ballard book. I'm sure that, would have thought there'd be a copy of it somewhere. It's all about the film and yeah, just all sorts of merchandise and things you can get about the Titanic. Yeah, you'll be able to buy the book in the shop. Yeah, so they have this photo opportunity here as well. It's all right, yeah. <laughs> you can call in that. Um, I have taken a picture, or somebody took a picture of me, so I will insert that. But yeah, I think this is the end of it now. Such an amazing place. It's actually a bit smaller than I thought it would have been, but yeah, something to do with wood, steel, and somewhere else of the each corner represents something else but i don't really know um but yeah they are a, a scale replica of the the bow of the ship and then yeah that's it that's the end of it walking around there sniffing and coughing and oh it wasn't a pleasant experience to to vlog anyway such a amazing building in here but yeah I'm a, i am allowed to film this bit it was just some of the galleries in there like i said it is a bit quiet and a bit emotional in there but now I'm out I'll go down into the gift shop show you that I might end up getting a, a Titanic t-shirt but yeah here's the cranes over here building apartments all right so I'm in the gift shop I'm loving these little signs oh that's actually made of metal like a rusty metal like the sign that's outside can you really see it I mean, I would get stuff, but I, I, at the moment we've moved and we haven't really got space for things. You can get this little wooden Highlander wolf crane. <laughs> there's, there's all sorts of stuff in here. But yeah, the actual museum was really good. Loads of t-shirts and just knickknacks, really. Uh, caps. I can't see the Robert Ballard book. They must do. I don't think they probably publish it anymore. Loads of Titanic stuff everywhere. T-shirts, underwear. <laughs> How much are the boxer shorts? Oh, they're very cool though. Ten pound for your boxer shorts. T-shirts. They're all women's ones. Posters. Oh, that's nice. I love that. Yeah, RMS Titanic t-shirt. That's pretty cool. To be honest, I might actually just go on a um, on the website, see if they have like an online store rather than buy something here, because um, if it doesn't fit, then I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit stuffed rather than I can send it back. Yeah, that's really it, really. There's no, there's not many books or anything. Little models. Uh, it's mainly uh, t-shirts and stuff. There's mugs over there. Right, I'm going to get a coffee now. I would get something to eat, but I might wait a little bit later. I I've, I've got to be struck for time to be honest, because I want to go up to see the um, giant causeway. But I've also need to go and walk outside and show you the dry dock and um, the SSS nomadic as well which is just down there it's not far to walk to that and again i'm not supposed to film on it but i might get some pictures and some little clips if i can i mean i'm not i'm not carrying a massive camera at the end of the day so i'll just get a, a latte from here so they do actually have another cafe here i've got a chai latte I've got free merch. Well, I paid for it with the uh, with the chai latte. But yeah, there is other things in here. I'll show you the map actually. There's the Samson and Goliath cranes apparel. I've just been told it's the first time in decades where they've actually been close together. So Samson is normally a bit further down here. Um, there's the museum here and the hotel. You'll see there's another big ship that you can go and have a look at as well. HUS Caroline. Titanic distillers, there's a lot here, and there's like an IMAX and a cinema and all that sort of stuff down here in Nando's. There's the SNS Nomadic, so yeah, it's not far away. This is where the tower cranes are. 
um, yeah, there's a hop on hop off bus as well. Big fish, I don't know what that is, but I don't know if there's like any other museums or aquariums or anything like else like that worth uh, doing here in Belfast. But yeah, I'd be definitely be coming back at some point. So yeah, I'll walk to the end of here, get some good pictures, see the Hal and the Wolf cranes because you can't see them at the minute. They're at the back of the hotel. But I didn't realise it. I was actually stood out here last night, but after being all the way up there and looking down. And I did see, say this in a couple of videos, but yeah, you've got the silhouettes of the ship, so there's the front end of the ship. It's, a, it's insane, and it goes all the way down to the end of the dry dock here, which is obviously, like I've been saying, has been filled in. Right, so like I said, the Titanic was in this first spot here, and it was built... Well, it was launched in 1912, May 19, sorry, 19, what am I even on? 1911. So it, it didn't set sail for on its maiden voyage until a year later. Obviously, they've got to retrofit it out with all the interiors and test it all and take it on its things. There's so much to read there. I'm not going to go into the whole details of it, but the Olympic and the Britannic were on the opposite side. It's just fascinating. I just asked the guy that works inside, he's just gone off for his break and said what was the reason for filling in the dry dock and he's like, ooh, it's just basically for health and safety reasons really but now if I sit sort of here in the middle, I mean the museum's so impressive but yeah, just bear in mind if you do come here wanting to film that you, you will get turned away, you won't be allowed especially in some of the galleries I can sort of Get that so I sit down on this wall here and in 1911 this is where the Titanic was launched from fascinating right so I'm actually standing pretty much where the bridge of the ship of the Titanic would have been this plaque was unveiled on the 31st of March 2009 by John M Andrews great nephew of Thomas Andrews Chief Naval Architect Harlander Wolf, the uh, com comrade, the centenary of the keel laying of RMS Titanic, built on this slipway between 1909 and 1911. So it took him a few years to build it. I mean, yeah, with the size of it. And yeah, you can walk down here. And they've actually drawn out um, where the funnels of the ship were, I mean you could walk around the edge of it as well which would be I guess around here somewhere and then on the other side it's it's not as pretty as this bit, they got, well I say that, it's got the, the grass sections there but yeah looking back over there towards the Harland the Wolf Cranes over there it's a fascinating place and then they don't actually build ships anymore, Harland and Wolf, but they do retrofit ships. There's one over there at the moment being done up. You can see all the cranes around it. Yeah, it's brilliant here. This is what I was saying. Well, yeah, I'm going to have to be quick because I'm, I'm, I'm getting close to the time now, but this is one of the funnels just here. This is where it would have been, obviously, like, way up there. Yeah, it's fascinating. You got this outline of the ship, so I'm going to walk to the end of here, and then I'm going to go to see the SNS Nomadic, and then I'm going to make a move up to the Giant's Causeway, I think. But I've absolutely loved it here. It's um, such a fascinating place with the history and everything behind it. Yeah, really cool. So I think this is the middle of the ship here. This is probably where the Grand Staircase was, something like that. So, there's another couple of outlines where the funnels were over there. And you've got some outlines of where the lifeboats were as well. There's four of them here. And you can see how big these were. Pretty big. Just wasn't enough of them. It's a shame. Yeah, so there's a few on this side and obviously the other side over there as well. 
I just can't believe I'm here. It's just something I've wanted to do for years, is to come here and see all of this. Wow, they've even got the stern of the ship, or the back of the ship. Would have been to here where people have put locks here. Oh my god, like... Yeah, so I'm now stood where the back of the Titanic would have been. Looking all the way to the front of where the start of it was, it's just, it would have been absolutely massive. The biggest thing of its time anywhere in the world. So fascinating, I just wish I had a lock with me now, to put a lock on here. I'm definitely coming back here again because you you, you know you can bring dogs here, walk around this section here. Um, I don't think they're allowed to stay in the the hotel or go in the museum. So yeah, they, I don't know when they filled it all in, but you can see all the rocks down here and the edge of the dry dry dock just here as well. There's the middle section here. I think once they built the Olympic class ships, they just didn't bother using this dry dock anymore. And there's the, obviously the back of the other section here where the Britannic and the Olympic were built. So there's some more blocks over here as well with names on them. It's just so sentimental for people. Titanic Quarter, yeah, they've got Titanic Studios over there. There's all sorts of stuff here. Yeah, so, so cool to be stood here. So it's only a short walk to the SNS Nomadic, which is just here behind me. And the Nomadic was the world's last remaining White Star Line vessel in existence so here it is and what I was mentioning before about a dry dock where the Titanic and the Britannic and all that where I was stood earlier over there that they filled it in this is sort of what it would have been like obviously a lot bigger than this and the reason for why I call it a dry dock is because it, it's dry and it would have been on stilts like pretty much like this down here and um, yeah when it's ready to be launched they f open the, the dock up and fill it with water and then launch it outwards so fascinating so yeah I do have a ticket to go on this as well looks like I could probably get away with some footage on there because there's like some open top decks and stuff you can go have a look on but yeah this was the tender ship for the Titanic amazing so there's your opening hours open daily from 10 o'clock and yeah, Hamilton Dock and SNS Nomadic. Titanic's little sister and the only surviving White Star Line ship in the world. Yeah, fascinating. Let's uh, go down here and have a look. I mean, I could have come last night and had a look at all this, all the lights. Don't know why I didn't come and have a look at this, to be honest. Right, so let's walk the gantry into the ship. Oh, this is cool. So this will be completely original. It was actually registered to um, France. And then the museum bought it back off France. It actually feels weird um, walking around it because it's um, it, it, it's not level as you can see it's, it's on a slope but this is the ladies room Ooh. very nice ladies powder room can you spot the original panel the original panel uh, well obviously it was redone then at some point, original panel, I have no idea. Oh, there you go, original panel, installed 
1911. Yeah, very nice. Afternoon tea. Yeah. Oh yes, that would be lovely. Yeah. 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 No, no sugar. There's no scones either. <laughs> or scones. Scone. Yeah, scone. I'm scone. from yeah, scone. <laughs> if, you're, if you're from the north of England as well, it's scone, <laughs> not scone. Yeah, it's really cool in here. Bar there. <laughs> yeah. Holy man. Action camera. <laughs> wow. It's like something that should be on a GoPro. It is a yeah, it's very similar, yeah. yeah. It's a, a newer version, a better version than a GoPro. Yeah. yeah, so this is a second class section here. Uh, so there's no entry and there's toilets at the back of the ship there. Yeah, it's basically like a little ferry so the people would get on here and then it, this would pull up next to Titanic and then they would get off here onto the Titanic itself. But I want to find the um, st stairs to go up to the top deck. I mean it's really nice in here, it's, it's well kept, they've, they've done a good job of keeping it up to date. Oh, there's a lift here. Oh, contact a member of staff, can't use that. The chairs with the white star line logos on them. Yeah, it's not the biggest ship in the world. I mean, it was up to the up to the deck. Right, at the top deck. My God. <laughs> they didn't even have a proper wheelhouse unless they've removed it. Yeah, look at that. Captain of the ship. That's amazing, that. Yeah, I've loved it here so far. It's been a hell of an experience. But yeah, that's it. I mean, where better to finish the vlog than here, really? I hope you've enjoyed this one today, visiting Titanic Belfast. It's been amazing. The past day and a half has been so emotional for me, like just even driving in here, like I said, driving into Belfast and seeing the Harland and Wolf cranes. I mean, you just see the top of one of them there. Then that's Goliath, no, it's Samson. Yeah, sorry, Samson's the biggest one. Just see the top of it there. And, and just seeing all this, I mean, there's a bit more of this area to explore. Um, you do have like a cinema and an Nando's and there's other things over there to see. Um, yeah, but I'm gonna go over to the Giants Causeway now. It's quarter past one now, it's about an hour to get there. And then I've got a couple of hours drive back to, to Dublin. So I haven't got much time to be honest. And it's something I really wanna do uh, and experience here in Northern Ireland. It's been a hell of a place to visit. One of the best parts of the UK I've, I've, ever, I've ever been to. And I highly recommend coming and seeing it. It's just amazing. I mean, even if you're not into the Titanic like I am, or cranes, then it's, it's, it's still worth coming in and having a look, just to have a wander around and see for yourself how nice it is here. The people have been really nice. I've just not had a bad word to say about Northern Ireland since I've been here. Yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell for next time I upload another video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.